Okay, question four. Oh, it's a beauty to finish the test off. And not too many questions, there are just three parts to it, but definitely going to require some thinking. Question C is probably going to align things from A and B. And yeah, but let's start with question A. Determine the coordinates of D, the X. Actually, I, I can't start with question A unless I actually know what's happening. So let's look at our graph and say, here we're given this straight line. Well, f of x equals x plus 7. That looks like a straight line. Highlight, and they gave us the equation. So cool. And then our other function, g of x equals 12 of x plus 3. They've labeled it here. And we know, cool, it's a hyperbola. So we highlight here. That's that graph. That's that part there. And it's labeled there. Okay, so determine the coordinates of d, the x-intercept of g of x. Pink, pink, cool, all matching up. There it is. Now oh, this seems a bit easier now. So that's d, the x-intercept. Now what do we know about the x-intercept of a function? We can see something about it. What's its y value? Zero. So if g of x they've given us equals 12 over x plus 3, and we're given the y value, the output g of x, we're given that 0, so 0 equals 12 over x, that's what we're trying to find out, plus 3. Let's work out what 3 is. Well, let's just subtract 3 from each side. So negative 3 equals 12 over x. So 12 divided by what gives us negative 3? Well, x must surely be negative 4. 12 divided by negative 4, yeah, that works. So we're not done yet, though, because it said determine the coordinates. And I was quite impressed when I was marking to see, well, if you wrote it in the coordinate form, it's quite nice to go d equals, well, that's negative 4. Didn't ask what's the x value. It said the coordinates of d. So negative 4, 0. Lovely. There we go. But we've been writing as coordinates the whole test. So we're good to go on that. Okay, determine the coordinates of b. b is up here. Point of intersection of the two graphs. Okay, so graph where they equal each other. Now I can see that they also equal each other down here. So we might end up getting two answers and then having to interpret it to say well we want this one up here. Okay let's see where we get to on that. Let's make this nice and big and it might be easier. Okay so full screen. When are those two graphs equal to each other? When is f of x equal to g of x. Well, that's easy enough. When they're equal to each other, when is x plus 7? When is it equal to g of x is 12 over x plus 3? Okay, so how are we going to solve that? Well, we've got this equation and it's got a fraction. Normally we try and get common denominators or multiply out, so how could we write this whole right hand side as a fraction. Let's put the whole thing over x and do the same to that side. In other words, we're going to multiply everything by x. So, well, that's 12 over x plus 3x over x because we've multiplied that by x over x and the same on this side. So, we're going to go this one's x squared plus 7x. And so, if the denominators are the same, numerators must be the same. So, x squared plus 7x equals 12 plus 3x. We've got a quadratic, a squared. Now we generally solved our quadratic equations by rearranging them. So we've got everything on the one side equals 0. Then we can use that factorization trick. So x squared, oh cool, that's x squared, plus 7x, 3x. So let's subtract 3x from both sides. So we've got 4x, 12, positive 2. We're going to subtract 12 from the right-hand side so that it's not there, and we're going to get negative 12 there equals 0. Okay, factorize. I've been doing so much factorizing this year. Do it in our sleep. x times x gives us x squared. And what times what gives us 12 or gives us negative 12? Well, I know that you know how to factorize. So this is 6 times 2, 6x, positive 6x, minus 2x gives us 4x. So x equals negative 6 or x equals positive 2. 
I said at the beginning, I could already see we're heading towards this, where we get two solutions and have to interpret. Well, which one relates to B, the negative X value or the positive X value? Well, B's definitely got a positive X, so we must be dealing with this part here. So we know this part is 2 something. How are we going to work out what that something, the Y value is? Well, we can just substitute it into one of those functions. I'm definitely going, going, to, uh, going to go with the straight line because it's a bit easier. So we've got f of 2 when the input is 2, 2 plus 7, what's our output? It's 9. In other words, b when the input is 2, the output is 9. So let's put that into our graph because we'll probably need it. Okay, last question. Determine the coordinates of e if the area of the triangle ABE is 18 units squared. So we're trying to work out what this is, its coordinates, and we know that this area is 18 square units. Okay, we've got B, we don't know anything about E, we don't seem to know anything about A, and let's go from there. Okay, so we've got area of a triangle. I mean, it makes sense to me that we're going to use area of a triangle somewhere, half base times height. And let's choose A, B as our base. So this is our base, therefore this must be our height. So this is a right angle because it's a rectangle. Okay, so the area, area they told us is 18. Okay, 18 equals a half times the base. We said the base was A, B. A, B times the height, A, E. Okay, A, B. No idea what that distance is. Or do we? If we knew what A was, that would be helpful. Let's look. The x value of a, how far left has it gone? Is there anything else in line with it? Oh, d looks in line with it. So if d's x value is negative 4, then it makes sense that this x value of a must be negative 4 as well. And if the y value of b here is 9, so we 9 up, then this must also be 9. So maybe we, that can help us find a few things. So 18, slow equation half, a, b, a, b, well, a, b is distance from there to there, so we're going from minus 4 to 2, so that's 4, that's another 2, so we've got 6, so that must be 6, and a, e, well, that distance, we don't know, because we definitely don't know this y value, we do know the x value, though, because it must also be negative 4, so this is going to be a, e, we don't know what that distance is. But we've got lots of things on our equation. So 18 equals half times 6, 3 times AE. In other words, what must AE be? Well, if A is 6, then 3 times 6 gives us 18. So that distance must be 6. So if that Y value is 9, and that distance is 6, there it is, minus 4, 3. So we're going to go, OK, E is negative 4, 3. Quite nice. We've shown kind of our working, how we've got there. We've scribbled on the diagram as well. Um, I know for some of you, I've put there, you know, I gave you one or two marks, not the full three, and you feel like you might have got there. Just didn't feel like I could see your thinking well enough. So just have a look there. But well then, that is that. Uh, just as an aside to end the video, this is my third time recording the same question because I made a <laughs> bit of a mess up of my computer freezing and then recording the wrong thing <laughs> the first time. So, yeah.